Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about di different trigonometric functions. Today's topic is cosine. In many respects, cosine is um, like the sine function, which was the previous lecture. And uh, I'll try to be maybe a little bit faster explaining the properties of the cosine, considering you have already familiarized yourself with the sine. All right, so properties are... First, we'll start with definition. Now, just recall that if this is a unit circle on the coordinate uh, plane, and you will take any point A, and you will measure an angle phi from positive direction of the x-axis towards this particular direction from O to A. Now, this angle is phi, and for this angle we will define uh, a cosine of the angle phi as an abscess of point A. So this is x. This is y. For sine, if you remember, it was an ordinate. But for cosine, it's an adjacent um, side if this is a right triangle. But obviously, the definition doesn't depend on the fact that this is a right triangle, because the definition of this particular If you, if you will see this angle from this over there here, so it's almost like full circle, just a little bit less, the definition is still the same. It will take abscissa of this particular point, which is this in this particular case. So the definition is the x-coordinate of the point which designates the angle uh, we are talking about. Now, usually, if we are talking about trigonometric functions, as you remember, we measure angles mostly in radians. It doesn't mean that this is an incorrect. No, this is a correct uh, writing. However, when we are talking about function, like y is equal to cosine of x, then we are assuming that x is radians, unless specifically said otherwise. All right, so that's all about the definition. Now let's talk about how this particular function behaves. So we are talking about x coordinate of the function of the point based on this angle. So let's start moving. First, we will start from the point A, which is at angle zero. Angle zero, which means it coincides with this particular point, and its coordinates are x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. So this point corresponds to an angle of zero radians. Now, what's the x coordinate of this? Well. Obviously, that's x. That, that's, that's 1, right? So when phi is equal to 0, uh, cosine of phi is equal to 1. Actually, I would prefer to use, instead of angular letters, like Greek letter phi, I would just use an x which is usually used for the functions. But x means actually an, uh, an angle in radians. OK, fine. Now, let's move our point A um, over this unit circle, increasing the angle from 0, as it is here, to the right angle, which is equal to pi over 2 radians, right? So if x is equal to pi over 2, cosine of x, and this is an x coordinate, right? Abscissa, which is 
this particular point, and the coordinates of this point is 0, 1, right? 0, this is an x coordinate, and 1, it's y coordinate. So the cosine is equal to 1, uh, to 0. All right. Let's move forward. Uh, this direction, right? So we're increasing the angle. Now, as point A moves towards this position, which is minus 1, 0, and this is a straight angle, which is 180 degrees or pi radians. And as you see, the x coordinate is equal to minus 1. Next is three quarters of a circle. This is the point. Its coordinates are 0, minus 1. So when x is equal to 3 pi over 2, because this is an angle 3 pi over 2, cosine x is equal to 0. Now, incidentally, we can come to this particular point, uh, which is angle 3 pi over 2 counterclockwise. We can come to this point clockwise, but moving this, this direction, which is a negative direction for an angle. So if the angle is minus pi over 2, it implies exactly the same thing, that the cosine is equal to 0. x is equal to pi, this direction. But we can come to this point uh, moving negative uh, in a, to a negative direction of the angle measurement. Clockwise, we will come to exactly the same point if we will move minus pi, right? So if x is equal to minus pi, exactly the same result. And pi over 2, which is this angle, you can move clockwise by minus 3 pi over 2, right? So that's also the same thing. And it follows. And this is obviously if x is equal to minus 2 pi or is x is equal to 2 pi, that's all the same. 2 pi means the full circle, right? This direction, or minus 2 pi, we're still coming into this point, and that's why in all these cases, um, the value would be like this. So let's draw the graph. I'll put this circle here. So this is 1, 0, this is 0, 1, this is minus 1, 0, and this is what? 0, minus 1. OK, so now we're talking about graph. We start from x is equal to 0, which is this and point 1. If x is equal to 0, cosine is equal to 1. Now, as x moves towards the increasing the value, which means our angle is increasing counterclockwise, the next stop is pi over 2, where the function is equal to 0. So we will have something like pi over 2 when the function goes to 0. Then the next one, at pi, it's equal to minus 1. Uh, now, as you see, it very much resembles the sign. Then it goes to 3 pi over 2, somewhere here, for a function of this, and this way. Now going to the negative side, 
we will have a very similar one. Minus pi over 2, it's 0 again. Then at pi, it's equal to minus 1, etc. So, the curve itself looks exactly like the sine. Now, the only difference is, if you remember, sine function starts at 0, 0, and then it goes to a maximum of 1, at p over 2, then 0. So it's just... So this is the sine. So the whole graph is, is actually like shifted. Now, we will investigate what exactly the correlation between sine and cosine and why the graph really looks like it's shifted, and it is. But that would be a separate lecture. Right now, we're concerned with the blue line, which corresponds to the graph of y is equal to uh, cosine of x. Now, as far as periodicity, now, obviously, you understand that the function has a period, and the period is obviously uh, equals to 2 pi, because after the full circle, our angle after 2 pi radians, our circle actually, our point on the circle um, returns to the same value, and that's why its coordinates, abscissa and ordinate, ordinate are exactly the same. So 2 pi is a period. And you can observe it here. Like from here, for instance, to here, then the function repeats itself. Or from minus pi to pi, for instance, the function re repeats itself. It's supposed to be minus. So this is the periodicity. Now, what we can say about these nodes where function is equal to 0? You see, minus pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, etc. So the function is equal to 0 at x equals to pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is any integer number, positive or negative or 0. If it's 0, it's pi over 2. If it's 1, it's 3 pi over 2. If it's minus 1, it's minus pi over 2, etc. So this is where function uh, is equal to 0. Roots, if you wish, of the equation cosine of x is equal to 0. Now, where the function is equal to maximum, 1, at 0, and by period, by 2 pi, uh, as many times as we want. So cosine of x is equal to 1, which is maximum, at x is equal to 2 pi n, where n is any integer number. If n is 0, we have 0. If n is 1, we have equal to n. 2 pi, if n is equal to minus 1, we have two, minus 2 pi, and it repeats by periodicity. And finally, minimum function, when the cosine of x is equal to minus 1, minus 1, we have minus pi, pi, etc. So it's at x is equal to pi, plus 2 pi n, plus the periodicity. So that's maximum and minimum. What else is important? Now, as you see, graph is symmetrical relative to the y-axis. So it means what? It means that the function is even, which means that the value of the function uh, of positive uh, argument is exactly the same as the value of the function of a negative argument with the same absolute value. So, I would like to say that that the cosine of x is exactly the same is exactly the same as cosine of minus x. Now, well, obviously, you can see from, uh, from the graph, but it's probably better to look at this circle. Again, unit circle. If you will take an angle which is, let's say, positive, 
this is phi. And then negative, which is this way, minus phi. The coordinate of this function, of this point, B, would be. Now, if you will draw the perpendicular here and perpendicular there, it will drop into the same point because these are equal um, right triangles, uh, congruent, I should really say, by hypotenuse and an acute angle. Now, if this is not acute, if it's not an acute angle, if it's uh, angle something like this, this is one, and this is another. It's still the same thing because you can consider the angles which are um, pi minus this, which is this one, and here also pi minus this, which is this one, and the same congruent triangles you can consider, and again they're congruent because the hypotenuses are um, congruent to each other and the angles, uh, acute angles. So from equality or congruence rather of these two triangles, this and this, follows that these catheters of one should be equal to catheters of another, which means they are projecting to the same point, and that's why this uh, x coordinate is exactly the same for these two. So it would be minus x and, sorry, it would be the same x and minus y. Minus y goes this direction because these are also equal in length but opposite in, side, in, in sine. So this is a cosine, this is a cosine, and they correspond to each other. So the function cosine is even, and the value of this function for any positive angle is exactly the same as the value of a corresponding negative with the same absolute value. All right, so um, what else remains to be? All right, now how about, we were talking about this for Signs, how about this? Well, let's go back again to our unit circle. Let's consider first uh, an acute angle, that's easier. So if this is pi, this is pi minus x. Sorry, this is x. This is pi minus x. Now, it's, well, if this is pi minus x, it means this is exactly x, right? So these triangles are obviously uh, congruent to each other. Again, the angle, they're uh, right triangles, and the same hypotenuse since it's a radius of the same circle. So these two cachete are equal in length but opposite in signs. So that would be the proper direction. Now, what if it's pi plus x? Or x plus pi, it doesn't really matter. This is pi, and this is the x on this side. Same thing. We are projecting this point to exactly the same. So again, the same thing is here. Right? Well, by the way, what's interesting is how to obtain this from this without considering any, um, any drawings, any unit circle, etc., etc., uh, algebraically rather than geometrically. We already know that the cosine is uh, an even function, which means that cosine of pi minus x is equal to cosine of x minus pi, right? I'll just change the sign, and according to this, it should be the same. Now, we also know that cosine is a periodic function. 
which means it's the same as if I will add 2 pi, a period, <coughs> to the value of, of uh, argument. And what is this? This is exactly cosine of x plus pi, which is the same as this. So that's how we basically prove that cosine of pi minus x is the same as cosine of pi plus x, or x plus pi, whatever, which is equal to minus cosine. So this last equality I could have obtained from the first two just by using uh, the fact that it's an even function and it's a periodic function. Now, once we know the graph, we can manipulate this graph using certain known uh, factors about how to manipulate the graph. Um, now, for instance, you can basically, uh, well, as an example, I think I have something like 3 cosine of x over 2 plus p over 4, something like this. How to draw this graph? Well, first you have to change it slightly so you will have the sequence of so it's uh, x plus pi over 2 over 2, right? Common denominator, I use 2, but instead of p over 4, I put p over 2 over 2. Now, first I start with cosine of x. Then I have to draw the cosine of x plus p over 2, which means shifting the whole graph by uh, p over 2 to the left. This blue one goes to the left, so it would be something like this. Then you have to divide the argument by 2, which means um, the whole graph would stretch by the factor of 2, so it would be from minus, pi, minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi more waves would be like this. And then you have to multiply it by 3, which means it will stretch vertically uh, by a factor of 3. So that's how you manipulate. So in any case, that's basically everything I wanted to talk about cosine. Uh, now, these are properties of the cosine by itself. I am not talking about relationship between sine and cosine, some transformation formulas, etc. That would be separate lectures. So far, this is just about the function y is equal cosine of x. And uh, thank you very much. That's it for today. Goodbye.